Hi there, welcome to the CV3D 2012 Surface.NET API presentation. My name is Augusto Gonçalves and I'm, I'm a developer consultant at Developer Technical Services at, of Autodesk, based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Here's a quick information about myself. If you're not familiar with the Autodesk Developer Network, this is the program to support developers working on Autodesk APIs. For more information, please visit autodesk.com slash join ADN. To use the, sur the Surface API and any other .NET API on CV3D 2012, you need Visual Studio 2010, because this is the version compatible with .NET 4.0. If you have older .NET applications compiled, you should be able to load and run them on CV3D 2012, but you're not able to debug using .NET 3.5, such uh, including Visual Studio 2008 on CV3D 2012. That's because the debug engine on 3.5 is not compatible with the debug engine on 4.0. The new Surface API is mainly under the autodesk.civil.lan.database.service namespace. We have five main classes. We also have other classes, but those are the most uh, relevant on them. We have the base class Surface. We also have the Thin Surface and the Thin Volume Surface. Also the Grid Surface and the Grid Volume Surface. We are going to talk about each one of those five classes on the next slides. So the surface class is a generic class for all supported surfaces. This class includes methods for export to DIM, which is a new feature, rebuild and snapshot related features. We also have properties to access the analysis information, boundary definition and the new features like build options, masks and operations. With operations, for instance, we can access the information which contains the history of the surface. Probably the most used class is the thin surface, which is formed by a triangulation triangling sorry of an arbitrary set of points. This means that the thin surface is composed by triangles with edges and vertices. We can see on the image below that a surface contains thin surface triangle, which is connected by is formed by three thin surface edges, and each edge is composed by two surface vertices. One important thing here is that the edge is shared across two surfaces on most most of the time so the same edge is used by two thin surface triangle the same applies to the vertex so if we have a vertex we also have two edges at least connecting tho those edges we can also have more edges on a surface vertex you can see on the image some examples like that The thin surface also contains methods to add, delete and get vertex and lines. A line is a connection between two vertexes. We, we can use that to create new triangles or to modify the surface. We can create a new line or create a new vertex. Also the delete or get them. There are also some methods to find triangle, vertex and edge at a specific specific XY coordinate. So using an XY coordinate we can get the equivalent information on the surface and therefore get the Z coordinate. There are some interesting methods to move and elevate a vertex. We can get and we can access that information and move or elevate a vertex. Finally there are some different methods, some new methods to smooth the surface, minimize flat areas, or just simplify the surface.
the team surface also have properties to to add, remove, and iterate iterate through connect collections of breakpoints, contours, dim files, and also the new features like surface definition drawings when a surface is built up on, on AutoCAD entities like surfaces and lines. We can get the point files definition and the list of point groups. Of course, there are properties to get the collections of triangles and vertices. The edges are obtained from the triangles and vertices. We cannot get the edges from the beginning, but should be very straightforward to get that information from the vertices or triangles. Now the second class is a team volume surface. We have metrics for creation of those surfaces. We can create them based on two other surfaces. The team volume surface per class also contains properties to get the team surface property, the volume surface property, and also cut and fill factors. Now moving to the next class, we have the grid surface class. A grid surface is mainly formed from points that lie on a regular grid. So on this class we have methods to manipulate those points and find a cell edge or vertex on a given XY. Remember that a grid surface is composed by cells, not triangles like the team surface. We also have properties to get the collections, which includes add, remove and iterate the collections of cell, files and vertices. Finally, we have the grid volume surface, which contains methods for creation, just like the team volume surface, and also properties to get the grid properties, the volume surface properties, and cut and fill factors. Now let's see a sample on of how to access and use those new features of Surface API, .NET API on CV3D 2012. Let's switch to CV3D and see the sample running. On CV3D, let .NET load a .NET application and run the first command, test create surface. First step is to get the surface name and the style name. We can use any style name is going to create that style if it, if it doesn't exist. So surface one and style surface one. Now the first step is to check if that style exists. We're trying to get the style by name. So, open the styles surface styles collection and get each style and try to get by name. We can see that that code is not going to find any style because it, it doesn't exist. So, we are going to create the style using the full uh, information, the full parameters. Here we go. Uh, style collection, add the style, get it by the name, and then set some default data and the commit transaction. Now we can try get the surface by name by style. We can see that uh, the code is going to create a surface on the working database using the surface name then get the surface for read get the style and set the style to the surface finally we're going to add some points but in this case we are not uh, creating a very regular surface, we are generating some random points 
on the surface just to create the surface and we are going to return those points and add this, those points at the surface to add the points we will call to get the surface and add vertices on that surface as simple as that, we are not going to add anything else civil 3 d is going to do the rest and that's it we now have a surface a random surface created now let's do the second step and add a break line add some break lines the same idea get the surface name and the break line name The surface name is surface 1 and the break line name is break surface 1 so we are going to get the surface by name we found it by name uh, we are going to open the list of surface on the cv 3 d active document and get each surface and try to find it by name found the ID and we can move to the next step and create a class for it and we can now add the break line to add the break line we are going to do like we did before for the surface and generate some random points on it and use those these uh, random points generated here to create a break line with this name so to generate the break the random points it's it's random uh, just getting some random doubles and uh, we can now call the break line and add the break line to add the break line we're going to create a polyline using those points this is regular AutoCAD polyline but we are using polyline 3D simple poly pass those points and add it, adding it to the database then we can use that polyline ID to open the surface get, create a collection of entities add the polyline to this collection and calling the cv 3 d method call it surface break line definition collection and add standard break line passing the edit and the parameters that's it now we have the polyline the surface if we er erase this polyline we can see the surface break line here Now we also have a second sample which is more uh, applicable to the real world. The idea is to create a plateau on the surface using the new APIs. So back on civil 3 d let's create a new document. I'm going just to use the first step of the previous sample to create a random surface test surface create surface I'm not going to run through the breakpoints again because it's, it's the same let's just move through the breakpoints and we have the surface here in order to use this uh, I need a polyline it's a very simple one let's create a polyline and to understand the idea we are going to get this polyline and call its properties and change this its elevation to let's say 15 now we have a elevated polyline on the surface the idea is to call the method test create plateau which will uh, select a surface, select a polyline, ask if we want to erase this of the polyline after 
the creation of the plateau so create to select the surface select the polyline and here we are going to say that we yes we want to erase the polyline and we are going to open the surface open the polyline get the cole uh, create a collection using the polyline and get all the vertices of the the surface inside this polyline border so it's just to get the the vertices that uh, uh, are placed inside the, the polyline and we are going to elevate all those vertices using the polyline elevation it's very simple this is what we need to do to make this work but to make a, a, a very regular plateau we are going to add some lines on the border of the the plateau just to make it more um, more precise so we are getting each vertex of the polyline and creating a vertex on the surface using the polyline vertex information to make this more uh, applicable to cre really create a line where we we'll create a border on the on the plateau we're going to create a to get those vertexes and create a line on connecting those two vertices notice that I need to add the vertex and then get get it using the XY formation and then finally I have something like this the surface and a plateau with a planar surface on the top of it if I go to a 3D view I can see that that's a plateau you can use that to make some uh, initial studies on the surface so it's a very simple, it's very simple sample that's it, thank you for your interest on the surface.net API on Civil 3D 2012 and good luck on your development.